Does that sound good? Why do you want to? Why do you want to correct your status, Mindy? Uh, well, wait. That wasn't maybe. quite the right. That wasn't quite the right path here. Let's try that well, again. I'm going to introduce ourselves first. <laughs> right. Say it again. <laughs> no, go ahead. Tell me why you want to. What you're thinking lately? Uh, you, there's obviously all these people out there, patriots, all, all over the place, correcting their status. They've been talking about this for years. So tell me what brought you to this point. Well, I thanks for the question. I I've known about this uh, for a long time. In fact, um, I had started on this process several years ago, and I just kind of backed off. Um, but my main reason for wanting to get involved with this years ago is just seeing that, that our country, which, you know, I spent five years in the Marine Corps, this country, um, which I would defend to the death, I learned that it, it actually is a corporation. And when you start learning about all of the ways that we've been deceived and the way the system really works, I've been very diligent in my studies over the course of the last five years in studying the, the system of how, how our world functions and how different that is from how it's presented to us. And quite frankly, it just really pisses me off. And I don't like deception, and I don't like the way the system runs. I don't want to be a part of a corporation. Uh, I am a free and independent human being, and I want to function in the jurisdiction, and, and I want to talk about that word, but I want to function in the jurisdiction that most resounds with um, – with who I am as a person. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. And I've got something pulled up here. The United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. And that's a Supreme Court, let's see, Inri Miriam, M-E-R-R-I-A-M is what it says. The United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. That's just one of the places where they agree, where the court agrees with what you just said, it's a corporation. And, it, and if, 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 um, if anybody who's listening to this call doesn't understand that, you don't really have to work very hard to figure it out. All you have to do is just turn off the news and do a little bit of digging. And you, it's not like, you know, I mean, we talk, you've heard this phrase going down the rabbit hole. This isn't a rabbit hole. You don't have to even get out a shovel, you know? Like, <laughs> you don't have to dig. Exactly, to get yeah, yeah. It's pretty superficial, and and they hide it in plain sight, but just yeah. because they try to hide it doesn't mean that it, it is not a reality. And there's, there's you know, I, I am a big fan of rabbit holes personally, and, and uh, I, I think that on our calls we're going to talk about a lot of rabbit holes, but this is not a rabbit hole. This is yeah, how... Well, system functions, and you can deny it, cognitive dissonance is real, and what cognitive dissonance says is that your mind cannot hold two opposing thoughts. So if you think your country is this country, and that the president is a president, and um, that these people in Congress work for you, um, then to hear something that is different than that can be very difficult to deal with. And um, I understand that. I totally understand that and get that because I've been there and everybody who who is trying to speak the truth has been there as well. And so that's why... Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's not hard to find once you start... Yeah, it's not hard to find once you start looking is what you're telling me. And so anybody that chooses to start looking, you'll find the information. And once you find the information and you start on this path, um, you'll realize that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of blinders that have been pulled over our eyes and that um, it's gonna op it will open up some rabbit holes. And so do be advised that if you, uh, if you continue to keep looking, uh, you better get your shovel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's it, yeah, you'll need a shovel eventually, but right now, just to find this, you won't need um, 
And we want to give people, uh, listeners, we want to give them places they can go so that the learn, learning curve is really short. short. And we also want to, want to be really succinct about our reasons for wanting to correct our status. Well, first of all, what, what do you mean by status? Right. Yeah, we should talk about that. So, and, and it gets back yeah. to what we talked what, the, to the concept of jurisdiction, and uh, you right. have a great definition of that. If you could share it. Okay. So, jurisdiction is basically the law and the words that the words that govern this type of law. So, jurisdiction. Um, there are jurisdiction. basically two types of law. Um, there's common law and civil law, and that's all I'm going to say. Um, so here's what I love I don't about, think, about what you said. I, jurisdiction, it's, it's the breakdown of words. And you said the other day that juris means law and that diction means words, correct? Yeah, diction. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. So jurisdiction is really so the, the, the words of law or the law of words? The words of that particular type of law. So when you hear certain words, you know which type of law you're in. Uh, for example, when you hear commerce, you know you're under the general category of civil law. When you hear lex mercatoria, so these are the words that go with that type of law. And that's actually the pivotal thing that makes, that brings you into a particular jurisdiction is the type of words you use. So think of it as um, if uh, you're walking down the street, and you see somebody, you hear somebody speaking Chinese. You immediately put him, put them in the country of China. You know where they came from by the words they speak. You know, an American, if you're if you're in Europe, you know, if you were a Marine, if you were in a foreign country, they knew you were an American by the language, the, by the stuff that came out of your mouth. So that's an easy way to think of it. Right. The, right. the language you use. So now, and this kind of goes very, very quickly to get people in a really short learning curve what the practical reasons that you would want to correct your status is. And that is, in the common law jurisdiction, we have something called the Bill of Rights. That's common law. Every one of the public officials swears an oath to uphold the common law, but only for people who are under that particular type of language, that jurisdiction. So a big reason why people want to correct their status is that so they can be the standard that they go by, the standard that has to operate, the government has to operate under are the ones outlined in, they, a lot of people say the Constitution, but it's really not the Constitution. The Constitution is something else. It's the Bills of Rights. Um, so I'll give a reference. Let me give a reference before before you ask the next question. The reference for that is American Jurisprudence, Volume 16, Chapter 100, The Bills of Rights, Merely Declare Our Common Law. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was writing that reference down. You said American Jurisprudence? Uh-huh, 16. Uh-huh, Volume 16. Volume 16. Uh yeah, just just if you're going to search it, just put in if you're going to put it in a browser, put in 16 Amjur A M space J J U R and then space 100, and that's constitutional law. And when people say constitutional law, they really mean our American common law. It's just not as precise. It's not the most precise way you could say it. Okay. Before we get too complicated, um, mm -hmm. I want to um, just verify what you've just said and then ask a question. Mm -hmm. So what you've just said is, uh, and this is awesome, is that the word jurisdiction, we've heard that word a lot because of the, um, the recent anomalies in our election, right? Everything was about mm -hmm. jurisdiction. It wasn't the right jurisdiction, so you didn't have standing, right? And uh, yeah. I definitely want to talk about that because I think that's kind of the impetus for um, what I'm doing. So that jurisdiction means the words of law and that the words that you use depends on, will 
will tell you the different jurisdiction that you're working in. And there are two main jurisdictions. There's common law and there's civil law. And civil law is commerce or commercial or corporate. Is that correct? Yeah, like .com. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, just want to make it sure that the civil law is based on commerce, corporate, commercial law. And mm -hmm. uh, the well, okay, that's that's not quite exactly accurate, but they they all they're all squish those together in the same, put those all in the same lump. Right for our initial training, right for our yeah yep. yep. Obviously, there's uh, there's a lot more to this. This is very basic. Um, and then there's common law, and you use this phrase lex lex mercatorius. No, Lex Mercatoria, that goes on the other side. What, what I would suggest people do is whether it's just their imagination or whether it's actual a piece of paper, get a blank piece of paper and draw a big T and put stuff under civil on the left and stuff under common on the right. That's awesome. That's and, exactly what I'm doing on a piece of paper. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So because that what what that will do is clarify which side it goes on and all through our studies it'll go on either one or the other. You'll be able to immediately put things in one category or the other. There's only two choices. So this Lex Mercatorius, which side does that go on? Civil. Okay. And what is that? That's law that's law merchant. So Law merchant, and that that is about commerce, right? It's about so it goes with commerce. Anyway, yeah, that's the answer. Okay, all right, um, great. So that goes with commerce. Thank you for that. I know I've I've researched that that phrase before, and it, but it's been a long time that I I forgot. So so common law is. So if civil law is commercial and commerce, then common law is going to be what? Well, ultimately it goes back to the Holy Scriptures. It, if you look at, um, <clears throat> think of King Alfred the Great, and he had to unify Anglo-Saxons. He, he had to come up with a ready source of law. So he used the Scriptures, the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, Wait, and the New back, Testament. Back to Magna Carta? Much further. further Much back. further back. When, when yep. is Alfred? Forgive me for not knowing that. Yeah, King Alfred the Great is very often credited with putting the first precepts of common law down. So that was um, 800s, in, in the late eight, 800s. So... And we can go, we'll go through eventually a succession of laws so that people can kind of learn history a little bit better. We can do that eventually. But, it, but to kind of bring it back to status correction. Right, right. Unless you have other questions. Common law is for the people. Where civil law is for the commercial, common law is for the people. Would that be a fair bet just as a blanket statement? I think so, yeah. I think you could say that. And it's, so it's all related to um, common, we, remember we said jurisdiction is the language of law, and common parlance is what we, what we operate in, common parlance, just the common everyday language. That's the language of this type of law, common sense, you know, the common man, everything common kind of relates to this. Okay. All right. And so... So back to status correction. So um, I've just always assumed that um, that I was, you know, always functioning under of the people uh, until I understood that the United States was a corporation. And then I learned, um, which is so interesting, that the reason our name is in all caps on a birth certificate, and there's a lot of evidence for this, um, I do not have my tinfoil hat on right now. But the reason our name is in all caps is because um, we were, we were um, basically a part of a corporation that, we, that, our, that when, once that birth certificate was given to the system that we entered into this system almost as a form of collateral 
in the corporation. Is that correct? I believe it. Yeah, that's what I believe. And and that name, okay, that name that that your parents gave you, your Christian name. Uh, mine is Maria. Mine's Maria Patrizia Susana Mariana. That's oh, so beautiful. That's my. That's. I think I'm the only one. Yeah, you're not Italian, are you? <laughs> right. Italian and Spanish, and and we've had um, you know people in New York from. Yeah, I've told you this before from the 1640s. Wow. So it's Italians that came. My grandfather came when he was 16 from Spain by himself. Yep. Uh, to New York, and then uh, he married. He married. I'm sorry. I had a great grandfather that did the same thing. Came when he was, I think he was 10 or 11 or something like that, and came to New York from Italy. Wow, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah, my grandfather. <laughs> What's that? I don't know if he came on his own free will, but that's another story. Oh. <laughs> okay, that explains a lot, Mindy. Well, Sicily, after all, it is Sicily. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that explains even more. But yeah, no, my grandfather went through, from Spain. He came from Spain and he went through Ellis Island, and so my brother and sister in law have in law have found his name at Ellis Island um, and but he married a person whose family had been there a woman whose family had been in New York for ages you know uh, my one of my relatives was uh, commissioned into the uh, Army of the Republic or the Union Army one of the armies and I have the um, his commission papers and so that's the mix and it's really interesting because as you start to study this civil law versus common law, you understand that civil law is the law of the city and the common law is the law of the land. And, oh, that's, um, I'm writing this down. So we've got the law of the land is under the common law where the law of the city, um, which would be the incorporated functioning of the land, Right. I think you could. You could. Yeah. I think you could kind of say it that way. It's the. Um, it. The other thing to think about too is that it goes back to the city that is uh, Roman, the Roman city, which is the Vatican. Oh, that's going to bring us down another road, isn't it? Sure, that'll bring us down a road later, and so right. we'll put that rabbit hole off. But the the question that you had asked was when the birth certificate. Is is hypothecated into uh, a name that might be okay. Now here we go. Um, this is trying to give people a little bit more. Um, we we don't want to be just talking opinion. We want to be talking facts. So there's a Roman naming convention, and that's uh, oh minimus, maximus, and medius. Uh, I can't think of the Capitus, capitus minimus, all lowercase, capitus medius, upper and lowercase, and capitus maximus, all uppercase. So it's an old Roman civil law naming system, and the all uppercase is the lowest form, the lowest slave. And it seems backwards. It seems like the one with the highest um, rank in society would be all capital letters. But the one with the highest rank, the most sovereignty, is all lowercase letters, and it goes in the opposite direction. All caps is, the, is a slave. Wow. So, so the birth certificate was converted, caused the conversion of that, of that Christian name into that of a, a corporation. So that when you function in that civil Roman law of the city, Lex Mercatoria, you're functioning as that corporation. That's the only way they can see you and integrate with you. They can't see a man or integrate with anything. Nothing of substance. Right. It has, right. Has, yeah, it's a construct. They always, they can only operate under, with constructs. 
So that's why they had to convert you to a construct. And there's a whole lot of history explaining why they would do that and how they did that. But um, suffice it to say you believe that and so you don't like that and so you want to be more clear about how you'd prefer to operate. Correct. And before we move on, I just wanted to, to just clarify one thing so that people have kind of an idea. Because you were talking earlier about this King Alfred the Great back in 1800 AD. Then you were talking about Roman law and things that are away from us and far away. But when we talk about this birth certificate and being in all caps, we're talking about 1933 in the United States. Is that correct? When the birth certificates were implemented? Yeah, wasn't that like right around 1933? I'm going to have to check that date. I don't know. That's, um, I, I would, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess it was closer to 1913 and the Federal Reserve Act, but I'm going to have to check that when it was implemented. I think it was a little bit after that because you had the, you know, the Federal Reserve was 1913 and, uh, and then 1917 um, was the IRS. Okay, I think it was, okay, and that, that's, I think, I'm going to guess it was 1917. I'm going to guess that's when it happened, but I, I do have to look it up because I don't, I don't remember that. Look back on that, and, and I don't think either one of us can do things online and, when we talk on the phone, can we? Well, yeah, and, and yeah, we've got a few things, but yeah, I'm not going to look it up now, but, but the, I wanted to correct one thing that you said. I think you thought I said, 1800 for King Alfred, it was 800. It was 800 A.D. Okay, great. I do have 800 A.D. written down. So if okay. I said 800, um, okay. that was okay. a yeah. brain. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So back to the law of the land and the status correction. So I don't want to be a part of this commercial corporate entity. Um, I want to be a part of the Bill of Rights. I mean, I swore to uphold the Constitution, and I personally really love the Bill of Rights, and, um, and I want to be a part of that. So what do I need to do? Because my name is in all caps on a birth certificate, and um, that just is not cool with me. And uh, I've done enough research to know that I'm ready to um, make that change. How is it done, and what are the implications? Too big. Well, the main the main way, just to just the shortest answer possible here, would be by your own declaration. You sit down at your kitchen table and you write up your own declaration. I, uh, and then describe yourself, however you want to describe yourself. What 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 does the word I lower a lowercase I, I, uh, comma. Mindy, comma, this, comma, that, comma, describe yourself. I, I this, this, this description declare, I declare the following, okay? And you brainstorm that thing until, I'm, I'm afraid yours is going to be 25 pages, Mindy. No, so, no, I don't, I don't doubt that. I, I, uh, I, can't, I am uh, wordy sometimes, but I can also be quite concise. Well, and, and it's up to you. It's your, it is your declaration. It is you. It is about you. This is a story about you. Who are you? Where did you come from? What is your purpose here? How are you operating? What law form do you want to go under? Do you want to take control of every iteration and name style of your name? You know, put everything in there that you can think of in there. There are a lot of good references to, to read through and think about and, and just chew on before you start writing your declaration. That was my next question. Where can I go for, uh, for uh, ideas and templates? And Yeah, I wouldn't use a template. Okay. That would be well, one thing. I, I would say be organic. We don't want... We are unique and unrepeatable beings, and that is the best, that's the most wonderful thing we have going for us in reality and in law. So okay. be unique. But look at what other people have done and then take your ideas and make it your own. Make it yours. It's your declaration. 
Um, and that makes it even stronger in law because it was obviously original. Mm -hmm. Okay, Beautiful. so where you go, where you go, and we talked about this, and I've given you, I've sent you some stuff, and <clears throat> I like KL. I like the way he kind of goes through it in a really calm manner, and it's on Crow Triple Seven Radio. Yeah, uh, I see. To, yeah. to a couple of hours, and it is, um, it's really valuable knowledge. I mean, the guy's definitely done his homework. Um, he's um, he's been around the block a couple of times, and he can present information in a very palatable, simple format. Um, and because you know, a couple of years ago when I was kind of going down this path, I was so confused, and mm -hmm. I couldn't brain around it. And, it. and it seemed like the the more information I got, the more confused I got. And so I just bailed on the whole thing. I just said, no, I'm not going to do this right now. And what yeah. I love now is that it has become so simple. So you're saying that really the first step is just to basically create your own declaration of independence of who you are, um, where you come from, and where you want to go. Yep. Yep, that. and and we have studied, my husband and I, and this is, and you have, lots of people have studied all kinds of material out there, and that's why we're even bothering to do this show because we can help people by shorting the learning curve and eliminating confusion. Yeah. So if you have more than two choices, you know, most people will quit instead of making a decision if they have 47 choices. And we were talking about this before we started recording today. Um, these people will divide, divide, divide. There doesn't seem to be a unified approach, so maybe we can provide some just just fewer choices so that you and, and, and the best choices for people well, so that yeah, they can make decisions. The way that I look at that, and I, I love what you just said, uh, Maria, but the way I look at that is, is that I don't even want to provide a choice. I just want to give people information so that they can use their own brain, their critical thinking skills to make better decisions. Because well, okay. So, so okay. joining a yeah. group, before you go joining a group, make sure that you understand who you are and what you want. And Absolutely, and I would say don't join any group. I mean, eventually right. if you decide you want to, but, but don't feel like this, is, this has anything to do with what anybody else is doing. You know? Oh, that's, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Just, right. you know, learn to stand strong, stand up on your own two feet first, you know. And so, and, and of course, okay, I, I want to try to shorten your, your learning curve because I've studied all the information and I can point you directly to somebody who has it right, makes it simple enough that you don't have too much information. But of course, once you start down this road, if you find other folks and you feel like exploring, doing all the exploration that I did or that others have done, feel free, of course. But if you're one of the people, one of those kinds of people who wants to keep your life a little bit more simple, then you can, you know, look at these two choices I'm looking at. And I think the very best two out there, um, and they're very similar, really, is KL on Crow777radio.com. And, uh, you know, the show numbers, it starts with 252, and then you can just kind of sift through and find the others. He's got a, lot a really stuff. encouraging approach. Yeah, What's that? There's a, lot of good stuff there. there's a lot of good stuff there for sure. So, um, <laughs> so they, say that, that one, that's really simple. And then let me, let me give the other one because this work is good. It's, it's comprehensive and it's good. It's Anavon Wright, um, article number, I think it's 948. I, I, I can probably look that up. But the two of them, are, they give a lot of similar information. Let's just say it that way. Okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, 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 it's okay. I, I, um, I was interrupting you. <laughs> 
we, we, you know, we keep, people need to keep in mind we got two Italian New Yorkers on the call here. So, um, yeah. and, and I think one of the reasons why we, uh, we do drive. Um, so two simple uh, places to go for knowledge would be KL on, uh, triple, on Crow 777 Radio and Aunt Anna Von Wright. Uh, she's got a lot of good information. There is other really good. Let's not uh, uh, let's not forget about Kevin Annette, and uh, he's got some really good information out there on common law. And um, I believe that uh, that there's a couple of other books out there on correcting status. But um, before yeah. we go too far, because I know this call, we're gonna we're gonna only have about five more minutes, and so okay. um, I okay. think that we'll have to have a separate call for the outline of how this is actually done. Um, so yeah. why don't we just, why don't we finish it up with um, you've answered my question on how to begin, which is creating your own Declaration of Independence. And the other question I had, um, which I think is really important, is um, what are the implications for doing this? Um, I know that there's um, lots of ways. I've heard correcting status, and like you have to totally, totally and completely check out of the whole system, and then um, and then it can be very complicated uh, to do things, and so. There's complicated ways of doing it, which may have some value for folks, but there's also more simpler ways. But should you decide just to do this Declaration of Independence, what are the implications for that societally? How does it change your life? Okay, uh, how you integrate with society, and again, that's really your choice because you are making all your decisions for yourself. So you can at any time go ahead and use that corporate person to operate. You can continue to use that corporate person. So, um, and so it's, it's going to be up to you, but what this, the way I use it, and what I've done is to basically leave everything about the law of the city behind. That's just me. Some people go... I, I missed that. Sorry. Would you say that was on the extreme end? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm an extremist. Yeah. Heck nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so you've 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 kind of just completely, and we can talk about what that means. And so basically, just in a nutshell, just to keep it really simple for folks, you can create your own Declaration of Independence, and you can describe in there who you are, and you can use this all capital name that's on your birth certificate and say. Um, say something along the lines of, I can use this person, all capitals, um, to function within the corporate system and operate in the way I always have, but I am this other person in all lower caps, and this person um, falls under common law in the Bill of Rights uh, and blah, 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 whatever you want to put in there. Is that is that make, is that Am I kind of picking up what you're putting down? I think so. I think I think you've got it. Um, you you might want to say that you primarily operate under American common law, but for limited purposes, you use your juristic person, which is that that name styled in different ways. But you have, um, for me, I have taken control of all iterations and permutations of that name. So nobody else can use it. It basically copyrights the declaration, copyrights that name, and it's my property now. And anybody else who's using it, who I don't want to have be using it, is infringing on my my copyright. Is it all lower lowercase letters? All of them. Wow. I've taken control of all of them. Oh, so even your corporate... Um all capital name. Does that even exist still? Absolutely. Yep. Wow, this is great. We are really take on to control. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. And 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 actually you go through all of KL's teaching and he'll tell you how to how to do a, D, a DBA under those names, get a bank account using that name, but now you've taken control of it. And so this is we can we can go through this too. He goes through it really well, so you know maybe we don't have to. Maybe we can cover more important some other you know things that he doesn't cover. You know to keep the learning learning cor curve kind of short. Um, but he will uh, tell you how to take control of that name and operate in the private side 
rather than just being solely a public person. We'll we'll explore that later. You know, I, I, but, I love where this is going, and I think that um, I think that we should maybe look into doing. Not that we need to redo what he's done, because I am definitely not a person that wants to remake the wheel. But I yeah. think we should go through it together. Um, I know in advance. I already have questions, and if mm -hmm. I have questions, I'm sure there's people that have questions also. And so that might be a really good way to kind of just walk through some of these things. Um, and I will do my due diligence and study these things before our next recorded call. Okay. And then there's one other thing I just wanted to say quickly. The Anna Von Wrights article is um, anavonwrights.com slash basicforms.pdf, and that happens to be article number 928. And she actually has come around to my process. She used to say that you had to do all this paperwork, but now she's saying you just need a declaration. And so we had, we had a miniature war over it and um, not long ago, and she's come around to my way of thinking on it. And it happens to be the way Kevin Annette's doing his, his stuff too, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I think that, that miniature war was kind of, uh, at the beginning of that, it's kind of when I, uh, I exited and uh, was just like, this is too confusing. You've got these two yeah. people, could, you know, argue, you know, and it was uh, that was a couple years ago, I think, even wasn't it when it started? Yeah, probably. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, but my 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 take is that if you really are in control of your own destiny, you really are self-governing. Then what does it take more than for you to say what will be? Right. You know, it's your declaration. That's how it is. It does help for you to use certain um, forms that have already been previously, certain patterns that have already been established. your governors can do How is it that we have come to thinking and believing that anyone has more to say than you Stand up Sing your song Let us know the wisdom of your heart you belong, that we belong to you, that you belong to us and that our love is all and true. First step and commit to take a chance. Believe, just relax. Cause no one ever died of trying to take the music back. Just leave it to them others to excuse. Well, state your heart, be yourself. Help us understand it's you and everybody else I'll take a breath and I'll see it through You know that I am more myself when I'm standing up for you that we don't 
will see the pain Which we exchange for circumstance Made easy to believe in Where everybody's loss becomes a gain Come forth, reach out your hand Be your brother's keeper this one time Say he belongs Say we belong to him That he belongs to us And that our love is all and true 